All right, so we're just going to kind of jump right in. So we're solving systems of equations that have three equations and three variables. So now we're going to have x, y, and z. Okay. So um, let's just jump right in with an example. Also, I will always put lines through my z's because if not, they will end up looking like my twos when I start writing too much and too fast. So, if you're ever not sure. So, we have three equations, three variables. So, for always double check that you copied it down right. Honestly, because I know, at least, I don't know about you all, but at least in my other class, they have a very bad tendency to copy stuff down really fast and mess up a sign. And you're going to get really mad if you realize that and have to start all the way over again. So, Slow down and check what you're doing. You guys are usually pretty good about that, but. Um, all right, so basically we're gonna look, we're gonna use elimination, right? And we're gonna pick one variable to get rid of first. Right, so looking at our equations, I've got an x, a 2x, and a negative 2x. Um, then I've got negative 3y, negative four, positive four, and then I have two, three, and two. So I'm gonna get rid of X because that means I'm just gonna to have to, like I'm gonna pick two of my equations to work with first, to add together, right? So I'm gonna pick these two and get rid of X, right? So basically you're gonna pick any two of your equations, get rid of one variable. Whatever variable you want. Okay, so let's do that first. So I'm just going to copy those over here. That way they are kind of out of the way. All right, so just like we did with elimination, we're going to add them together. going to do lots of examples but so positive 2x and negative 2x are going to cancel out now this time it just so happens that <clears throat> our negative 4y and positive 4y are also going to cancel out it will not always do that but in this case it does which is fine just makes it a little bit easier on us okay then 3 minus 2 gives us a 1z and then 8 and negative 12 gives us negative 4 so, normally, what's going to happen is you're going to be left with an equation with two variables equals a number. Like, so if y's didn't cancel, I would have something with y plus z equals negative 4. So, then I would get a two-variable equation. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the equation that we haven't used yet, so the top one, and combine it with either one of the other ones we've already used. So... Let's say we're going to do the top one and the bottom one. Okay. So what do I have to do to that top equation to get rid of X? Multiply it by two. All right. So you need to also, you need to get rid of the same variable every time. So since like initially my goal was to get rid of X, I need to be getting rid of X. Or I could have technically got rid of Y, but it's going to be easier to do X in this case. So, like, at the beginning when you're working with these three variable equations, you need to get rid of the same variable in each step. Like, if you get rid of x from the first two, you need to get rid of x again in the second two. Okay? So, let's multiply this equation by 2. Right? So, again, we're multiplying that 2 to everything. So, we're going to have 2x minus 6y 
plus 4z is equal to 10. And then I'm just going to copy down my bottom equation over here. So negative 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals negative 12. Why is negative Because I want to get rid of the x's. Yeah, because I have a, just a 1x here, but I have a negative 2x here. All right, so now we're going to add the equations together. So my x's cancel. All right, I have negative 6y and positive 4y to give me negative 2y. And then 4z minus 2z is just a positive 2z. And then it's equal to negative 2. All right, so I now have a two-variable equation. So tip, if we didn't have two things that canceled out here, we would have two two-variable equations, and we would put those together and just use elimination like we did in the last section to solve for a variable. But since we know already that z is equal to 4, we're going to take that z, that value for z, which is negative 4, and we're going to plug it in for z here, which will allow us to solve for y. So I've got um, somebody go over here. So negative two y plus two times negative four is equal to negative two. So the negative two y minus eight is negative two. Add the 8 over. So y is going to be equal to negative 3. All right, so now that we have um, y equal to negative 3 and z equal to negative 4, we're just going to pick one of our original equations, plug those in, and find x. So any one of our original three. So do we have a preference? All right, let's go with the top one. So I'm going to like shrink some of this a little bit, if that's okay. So we have x minus 3 times negative 3 for y plus 2 times negative 4 for z equals 5. So I get x plus 9 minus 8 equals 5. I'm going to kind of go over here because I'm running out of room. So 9 minus 8 is 1, so x plus 1 equals 5. Subtract the 1, so we get x equals 4. So that means our solution is going to be... So, oh, not the highlighter. So 4, negative 3, negative 4. So you got x, y, z. All right, that was a lot. How are we feeling? Okay-ish. It's not, diff like, it's really, you're just doing elimination a lot. It's just you have to do it a lot more times than normal. You have to do it three times, basically, instead of one. All right, let's do another example where we're going to end up with two equations to work with.
All right, so here's our next example. Just looking at this, what do you think the easiest variable to eliminate is going to be? Z. Z. Why'd you pick Z? Right. So, since it's got a coefficient of 1, it doesn't have a number before it, we're going to use Z. Um, so, let's go ahead and start with our top and bottom equation. So, to get rid of Z there, what am I going to have to multiply my bottom equation by? 5, right? So, for now, let's take this and multiply it by 5. So, that's going to give me negative 20x plus 15y plus 5z equals negative 10. And then I'm just going to bring my top equation over here. So, negative 4x plus 5y minus 5z. Oh, yes, negative 50. Thank you. I knew that didn't look right. <laughs> All right, and so now we're adding these equations together. All right, everybody with me and see what we did? Okay, we're get, using the top and bottom equations. So that's going to give us negative 24x plus 20y, and then the z's cancel, equals negative 56. All right, so now we have an equation. We're just going to leave that alone for right now. We don't need it yet. We will in a minute. All right, so now we need to use our middle equation. So, and we're going to use the middle one and which other one? The bottom one, right? So, but now we're going to take that bottom equation and multiply it by negative 2. Right, because now we need to cancel it with... Um, that middle equation. So now we're going to take that, multiply it by negative 2. So I'm just going to copy my middle equation down first. So I get 3x plus 2y plus 2z equals 16. Now I'm taking my bottom equation, multiplying it by negative 2. So I have 8x minus 6y minus 2z equals 20. All right, we're going to add those together now. So we get 11x minus 4y our z's cancel equals 36. All right, so let's pause here for a second. How are we following with this first step? All right, so pick any two equations, get rid of a variable, use the equation you haven't used, the one you already did, and get rid of the same variable. That's a key point because now if you look, we have an equation that has x and y, and we have another equation that also has x and y. So now we can put these two equations together, use elimination, substitution, whatever you want, really. Elimination is easier, I think. And find x or y, like we just did in our last sections. Okay, But if you don't get rid of the same variable, you're going to get like x and y, and then y and z, and you can't do anything with that. So that's why you have to get rid of the same variable every time. So... Now let's just take our red and blue equations and combine those together. So I have negative 24x plus 20y equals negative 56. And I have 11x minus 4y equals 36. So I'm obviously going to have to multiply one of these equations. Um, is there something that stands out to you guys? Yeah, multiply the bottom one by... Five, right? That's going to get rid of our y's. So 
that gives me 55x minus 20y equals 180. And then I'm just going to copy this equation down under here. All right, now we're going to combine those together. So 55 minus 24 is going to give you 31x. Our y's cancel. You're going to have 180 minus 56, which gives you 124. And we're going to hope that's divisible by 31, and it is. So now we have that, I'm going to write this up here, x is equal to 4. All right, so now we have one of our variables. Now we got to find the other two. Would it be a negative 4? Because it's negative 1, 24. It's positive 124. It's 180 minus 56. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's positive. All right. So now that we have x, we're going to plug it into one of our two variable equations to find y. <clears throat> so we can plug it in here, or we can plug it in here. I'm going to plug it in the bottom one just because 11 is a smaller number to work with. All right, because if we plug it in at the beginning, we're still going to be left with two variables, and that's not going to help us get anywhere. So, <clears throat> like, plugging into an original equation should be your very last step. All right, so we're going to do 11 times 4 minus 4y equals 36. Subtract 44. Negative 8, so y equals 2. <coughs> I just wrote it up at the top because I'm out of room. Yes? Does it matter which equation you plug that x equals 4 in? It does not. You could plug it in here. Or you can plug it in here. Okay. So, which, which equation here? You don't want to plug it into one of the three variable ones yet. Okay. Because that's, just, that's still going to leave you with the y and z, so that's not going to help you get another solution. Okay. Yeah. So, you want to make sure, once you get your first answer, you want to plug it into a two-variable equation. So, like, you have to kind of, like, work down and then, like, slowly work your way back up to the three variable ones. All right, so now that we have that, we need to plug our x and y into one of our original equations. I'm going to kind of shrink some stuff and make some room here. So, do we want, what equation do you guys want to plug into? Bottom one, okay. So, we're going to have negative 4 times x, which is 4, plus... 3 times y, which is 2, plus z equals negative 10. So negative 16 plus 6. So negative 10. And then add the 10 over. And so we get z is equal to 0. All right, which is perfectly fine. Remember, we can have solutions that are 0. So our answer is 4, 2, and 0.
yeah, that doesn't even hurt. All right, so let's see. I would say we could do this on whiteboards, but you run out of room on the whiteboards really, really fast when you do these. That's a seven. All right, so try this one in your notes and then we will work through it. Top two equations. I can get rid of X. Is that what most of you did to start with? Okay. So. I'm going to shrink that down. I already know that's going to be. Hopefully. You that. So that's going to give me. You also messed up a sign at the beginning. I just know. Look, you got negative three, positive four. That should give you a one Y, not a seven Y. I just now caught that as I was like going to do this. So you get, yeah. So when you add these two equations together, those cancel, you get Y plus eight Z equals 20. All right, then I'm going to take my top equation and my bottom equation and multiply that top one by 5. So that's going to give me negative 5x minus 15y plus 15z is equal to 105. Right, and then copy down my bottom equation. So then when I combine those together, X's cancel. You get negative 8Y plus 13Z is... 71. Wait. 105 minus 34. Where did I get 81 earlier? Because I typed in a 24. It is 71. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That was my bad. I wasn't paying attention. So then we're going to combine the red and blue ones. So I'm just going to copy my blue one under here just to kind of save some space. So now I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by 8. So that's going to give me 8y, 64z. And then copying that one down here. Yep. You put 20 instead of Wow, thank you. There we go. No, it's 20 up here. Okay, so then now when we combine those together, you get 77z is 231. And divide by 77 to get that z is equal to 3. Um, now that z is 3, I'm going to plug that in here. So I have y plus 8 times 3 is equal to 20. So 
So y is negative 4. And then I can take those two, plug them into any equation. I'm going to plug into the middle one. So I get x plus 4 times negative 4 plus 5 times 3 equals negative 1. So x equals 0. So your final answer should be 0, negative 4, and 3. All right. So any questions you guys can think of right now? It's just one of those things that's going to take a little bit of practice, I think, to get the hang of. But all right, we're going to go ahead and end there today. We've only got about five minutes left. Right, and then we'll work on this assignment tomorrow in class.